Hello and welcome back to part 23 of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governance University. Today's video is all about Data Management Foundations, which is class number C175 and is worth three credit units. So where to start? Well, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm not a big database fan. So in this particular degree program, there's actually two database classes. There's this one, which is the foundational class, and then there's an application class that I suppose follows it, which is what I'm going to do next. Um, in my work experience over the years, I've worked with databases quite a bit, especially uh, SQL database, Microsoft SQL. Um, you know, but it was infrastructure type stuff. You know, I would um, back them up, import them, export them, uh, things like that, run queries against them. Very basic, generic stuff. But in truth is, with all those years of working with it, I never really got into them or enjoyed working with it. It was always kind of a pain. Um, so these classes were deliberately left to the end of my degree program because, you know, I really didn't want to work on them. I guess looking back now, I probably should have done them earlier. So that way I could have just gotten them out of the way rather than, like I say, leave them to the very end. But it is what it is. So because of my lack of interest, studying for this particular class was quite difficult. I got to admit, I had to really force myself to get through this because there were at times when I really just didn't want to carry on because for me, this was uh, a low point and really quite boring. But um, anyway, I'm going to give you um, hopefully enough information, some tips to pass this class and get through it. And I guess that's all that really matters. Okay, so how'd you pass this class? Well, let's start with the people with experience. Uh, if you have a pretty solid understanding, you're a DBA admin, that kind of stuff of databases, you know, you uh, have a lot of working experience, uh, you could maybe knock this one out fairly quickly. So as always, those people go ahead, take the pre-assessment, see how you do, if you score really well, and I would say 85% or more, then you might be ready to go ahead and move on to the objective assessment. The only thing I would say for those people is just look at the coaching report, make sure you look into the things that you just need to polish up, maybe you got wrong, and also definitely uh, look at the business intelligence section. And I'll touch on that a little bit more in a moment, but I think you just probably need to review that as well before taking the objective assessment, and then you'll probably be okay to pass. For all other people uh, with minimal experience like myself and, and those with no experience, then unfortunately this one is going to be uh, one that you're going to have probably have to spend some time on because there's a lot of information here and it isn't the easiest to digest and I'm not sure everything they initially provide you is enough to pass the test and I'll explain that a little bit in a moment but uh, um, I hate to say it this isn't uh, an easy class well I certainly didn't find it so uh, stay with me I'll explain a little bit more and hopefully give you enough to get through this. So let's talk about the learning material that you're provided with. Overall, I would say it was adequate um, and enough to pass, but there might be some areas that you might need some additional help. So as always, you certify, provide the lessons, um, chapter quizzes and uh, flashcards uh, for each of the sections. There are no practice tests or labs. However, there are some videos you can watch uh, when you sign up for the class. Uh, there's your, you'll get sent a study guide and some links and things inside that study guide is uh, some videos of each of the sections. They're actually pretty good, um, they're very clear and, and very, you know, not too bad to watch so I, and not very long either. So uh, I would definitely suggest watching those. Along with that, there's a, an appendix section in the study material as well. And that just goes into some additional details about each of the different areas. If you're struggling in a certain area, you know, based on your coaching report or whatever, I would suggest that you definitely do some additional reading. So overall, that's probably enough, but uh, for me, I needed more. So Quizlet uh, was very useful. There's a whole bunch of sets out there that you can use to help you know memorize the different terms. Um, I'll put some links in the information for you. Uh, also, YouTube's very helpful. Again, if there's areas that you're struggling with, you can type it into YouTube. Hopefully there's an uh, informational kind of video again that try and break it down, help you. So YouTube, Quizlet and what they provide overall is, an, is enough to pass the class. So let me give you some tips, some areas that you definitely need to focus on. So when you go ahead and do the pre-assessment, you might notice that there are a lot of like a uh, type of graphs and they'll just ask you to explain what the graph represents. Uh, and there's a lot of those type of questions on the objective exam. So for sure, you definitely need to know uh, data modeling. So one to many, many to many, and one to one, kind of what that is, how to recognize it. I would definitely spend some time focusing on that because that was a fair amount. 
The other areas that you need to figure out are the one to uh, one uh, one normal form, two normal form, and three normal form. Um, those who don't know anything about databases, don't worry about it. You'll learn this when you uh, when you study it, but you definitely really need to recognize uh, the differences between them. That's key as well. I'd say I probably had five or more questions based on that. And the other area that I really think you should focus on is business intelligence. It only makes up 10% of the actual exam, and I'm going to go into more detail again, like I said in a minute, but uh, what they provided for you in the actual material wasn't enough. And uh, I basically thought like I had that area down quite well, but I, I, I basically flunked that part of the objective assessment. So I would definitely suggest that you go out and read um, the appendix sections on beta uh, business intelligence just to give yourself the best chance because you're going to get questions on there that I didn't think was covered. In fact, I know weren't covered in the main material, if that makes sense. So let's talk about the objective assessment. Well, first of all, there's a minimum of 50 questions. I actually got asked 56, I think, in total. Uh, they give you two and a half hours, which is honestly plenty of time. I think I used an hour and a half, hour and 45, something like that. But what they give you is fine. The actual exam is much harder, I think, than the pre-assessment. The pre-assessment is pretty solid, um, similar to the objective assessment, but the objective assessment is uh, is harder. So let me show you one thing. And this is uh, interesting because you know, there's another way to explain this other than showing you the graphics. So first of all, let me show you attempt one of my pre-assessment. So as you can see, did pretty well, right? Look at the very bottom section there, business intelligence. Did good, right? Well, this is the object. Uh, this is the objective assessment uh, report now. Do you notice anything significant? Well, absolutely. Business intelligence, I absolutely bombed it in the, uh, in the exam. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. One, there was questions I, uh, on this section that I'd never seen before. So I obviously guessed and guessed wrong. Um, and also the fact that the information that they provided when I studied it, and trust me, I really did the chapter section on business intelligence. I went through it. I studied it. I made notes and obviously did enough to do well, uh, and be ready to go. But for some reason, I did so badly on the on objective assessment. Clearly, there's a problem here. There's a disconnect. So what I'm saying to you, and the reason I'm showing you these different um, examples is definitely when you're ready to take the objective assessment, make sure you go out and just do that little bit more research on that section. It's only worth 10% of your class. And honestly, that's probably why I passed because I obviously did well enough in the other areas to, to kind of make up for it. But it's still quite frightening. And honestly, in all the exams I've sat, this is by far and away the worst score I've got on any one section. So kind of lucky I uh, passed in my opinion because obviously to get that bad you know I uh, was fortunate so let me give you an update on the term progress well as of today we've got 21 days left and four classes so I had a meeting with my mentor this morning and I spoke to her about some of the ideas that I had and uh, some of the suggestions that you guys gave me and uh, one of them was the extension and she was actually open to that so what that means is uh, she's asked me to complete one more class. Uh, my next class is the uh, database management applications class. If I can get that done in the next week or so, then she, what she said she'll do is she'll work on getting me an extra month. So basically the whole of February to complete the remaining three classes, which is which is fantastic. It means I won't have to pay for a second term and I should be able to get it all done in a term and an extension. So seven months, basically, which that's that's awesome. So uh, I'll definitely be um, kind of committed to doing that once I get the extension. but using the pace and considering what I've done so far, I do feel fairly comfortable that even though these last three classes are quite challenging, I think I can do them. And it kind of works out like two weeks of class, which I think is pretty doable. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll uh, talk to you soon.